bring communications from VHF through satellite to HF single sideband is brought to you by Sailing Toucan and K4FJZ. Please like, share, and subscribe so others can benefit from our many years of recreational and commercial experience. We're sailors at heart and now getting a 29-foot Catalina ready for cruising. We hope to see you on the water soon. Your absolute first communications priority is a properly installed and tested marine VHF radio with GPS and a marine mobile service identity for your boat. Newer fixed mount radios are required to have digital selective calling and emergency activation button. This one has built-in GPS and AIS receive only. You need VHF at the helm and a handheld can be used for this. Take it with you in the dinghy or in an abandoned ship raft. Marine VHF uses FM modulation and detection with limiters, so you normally hear only the strongest station. AM broadcasts use a carrier that can cause squeals between stations. Single sideband concentrates all the power in one sideband and is thus more efficient. Iridium Go satellite equipment will provide access to GRIB weather files, short emails, and limited voice, but it is very slow. It uses only 2400K baud versus normal speech at about 6400K baud. MHF SSB equipment gives you access to many stations and thus a much better chance of getting a message to a source on shore. Higher power ham transceivers like this one draw a lot of power unless you turn the signal down. This one uses 300 watts at full power for 250 watts output. Marine HF radios also draw a lot of DC power and are more expensive to purchase and operate. This ICOM M803 is very popular as it covers both marine and ham frequencies. You need your VHF antenna mounted as high as possible and you need to use low loss coax cable with as few well installed connectors as possible. Don't forget to weatherproof the antenna connector on the end of the cable. VHF range depends largely on antenna height for both antennas, except during special rare temperature inversions or sporadic E when the sunspot numbers are very high. Here are some common ham radio frequencies and typical ranges both day and night. During 2021, sunspots will be very low, so you must use lower frequencies. Lower MF, 160 meters, 2 megahertz frequencies, travel primarily by ground wave. Navy submarines use very low frequencies. HF frequencies can travel much further by skywave reflection or refraction, but skip intermediate distances. 
The amount of atmospheric ionization depends on the amount of sunspot activity and varies day and night plus day to day and year to year. HF propagation predictions are estimates of what distances can be covered by HF frequencies for a particular day, time, and specific path. Atmospheric soundings can be used to correct monthly average predictions. Ground waves follow the Earth's surfaces but need to be below 3 megahertz and sometimes require a lot of power and large antennas. 20 meters is sometimes a good daytime frequency and 40 or 80 at night. 20 is affectionately known as kilowatt alley as many stations run a thousand watts and large antennas. Signals are generally strongest just below the MUF and are overcome by noise below the LUF, which is much harder to predict. Browse the web for hamwaves.com for more detailed information. The F1 and F2 layers are the most important during daylight and the E layer is often not even present, especially during low sunspot activity. Daylight produces higher ionization and thus higher useful frequencies. Most HF radios have a signal strength S meter. One S unit equals six dB and a half an S unit or 3 dB makes a signal sound twice as strong. You can get through with low power unless a strong station is on your same frequency. At night the ionization slowly decreases but at sunrise things can change rapidly and you can lose contact quickly. 20 meters with its 14300 marine mobile service net is generally better during daylight. At night, try 40 or 80. You may be able to hear a high power shore station, but they may not be able to hear you on the lower frequencies. By using a network like 14.3 megahertz, there's a better chance that one station can hear you and may be able to relay for you if necessary. When conditions are not good, written messages may be the best technique and can be relayed. If necessary, use phonetics like Hawaii, I spell Hotel Alpha Whiskey Alpha India India Hawaii. Digital techniques like WinLink, PacTor, and CW use less bandwidth, providing a much better signal to noise ratio. The Coasties make regular scheduled weather broadcasts in addition to listening for emergency communications. Here's an example of weather broadcast from station NMG in New Orleans. Here are examples of transmission frequencies and times for two Coast Guard stations. Here are some other HF marine frequencies of interest and most are on upper sideband. Here are some Coast Guard HF emergency contact frequencies besides the MF2182 emergency calling frequency. The Coasties generally use steerable arrays of vertical antennas 
and will often ask where you are so they can adjust their antenna. To transmit on Marine HF, you must have a ship station license, like you need for operating on VHF outside the United States. You must also use a more expensive FCC type accepted radio. To effectively operate a Marine HF radio, you need a good antenna, an antenna tuner, an SSB transceiver, and a good ground. Marine antennas are always a compromise because of space limitations, but need to be as good as possible. Vertical antennas have the typical cardioid pattern, except when you're heeled over, and that's why high-gain VHF antennas are not recommended for sailboats. My first Marine HF antenna had a lot of loading coal, effectively lengthened the antenna so it could go all the way down to 2 megahertz. Here's my current antenna tuner with cross meters to make tuning much easier. You tune for maximum forward and minimum reflected power. Write down your settings so you can easily use them again for the same frequency. Some transceivers have a built-in tuner like this one that I will be using or control signals for an external tuner. For a single ham band, you can purchase a pre-tuned antenna. A knowledgeable ham friend with an SWR meter can help you tune your antenna. Specialized SWR analyzers like this one that I use can be a big help in setting up your antenna and tuner. HF radios and especially HF tuners must have a good ground to work against. You need to experiment with different grounds, but the more metal, the better. Just like TV antennas, there are some HF snake oil products out there. Do your research carefully using only trusted sources. I have seen some very inefficient installations made by people claiming to be an expert like the one on Lady Pepperell for the BLC race. You can use a receiver for getting weather information and as a crude radio direction finder with 180 degree ambiguity that can easily be resolved. Like using GPS plotters and especially radar, you must practice using HFSSB before you need it. You can do this at the dock to get information about a planned trip. We hope you enjoyed this very brief introduction to Marine HFSSB. Get a ham to help you and practice using it. Please like, subscribe, and share our videos so that others can benefit from our years of training and experience.